Hey everyone, I'm Richard and I've been looking into the recent reports surrounding Nvidia's new Pascal graphics architecture, the follow-up to the firm's Maxwell Tech found in the recent market-leading 900 series cards. It's an exciting time for graphics generally, with innovation coming in from all angles. We've got DirectX 12 offering new opportunities on the software side, and we've also got the arrival of 14 nanometer and 16 nanometer chip fabrication technology, offering Nvidia and indeed AMD the chance to double up on the amount of transistors it can cram onto the same area of silicon, making for much more capable graphics cards. And on top of that, we have new architectures too. There's Pascal from NVIDIA, of course, but there's also Polaris from AMD. And in many ways, all of these factors combined, it's sort of like a giant reset button has been pressed on graphics technology. And for both firms, there's everything to play for. Now, all of the signs suggest that it's NVIDIA that will be first to market with the new wave of technology. And I'd expect a big announcement at the Computex show this June. There's been a range of leaks from the Far East recently, which I'll talk about shortly. But for now, let's deal with solid data released by NVIDIA itself. At its recent GTC conference, the firm released specs for the Tesla P100 Accelerator, a Pascal-based chip aimed at large data centers and other consumers of so-called supercomputers. Now, what's interesting here from a gaming perspective is that all of these products eventually end up as gaming GPUs. The Tesla P100, now that uses a chip known as GP100. And what's exciting about this is that essentially this is the next gen successor to the GM200 chip found in the GTX 980 Ti and the Titan X. Changes may well occur for the consumer product, of course, but in effect, Nvidia has given us an early preview of how the next gen Titan may look. And there are some remarkable stats here. First of all, there's the size of the chip at 610 millimeter squares, actually bigger than GM200 601. Transistor density rises from 8 billion in GM200 to 15.3 on Pascal. Processing power tends to scale with transistor density. So this is a really, really big deal. Also remarkable are the clock speeds. The boost clock on GP100 is measured at 1480 megahertz. And what's interesting about that is that it's actually higher than how you can overclock a Titan X. Not bad for an industrial product, which typically is underclocked compared to gaming graphics cards. The specs also reveal that GP100 uses HBM2 memory, offering a vast improvement over the 384-bit interface found in 980. ATTI and Titan X. And on top of that, there are architectural improvements too. Nvidia has reconfigured its CUDA core setup, doubling down once again on L2 cache, just as it did with Maxwell. So, more transistors, more processing power, higher clock speeds, a wider memory bus, and a substantially revised architecture. All of those factors combined, well, I'd say that Pascal is looking pretty immense at the moment, but let's bear in mind that the GP100 right now is a non-gaming product. The most potent Nvidia hardware always takes its time to hit consumer level cards. Pascal's initial gaming form, well, that's gonna be different. And that's where the less solid rumors offer us some idea on what gaming GPUs we may actually be getting later this year. The Far East Press reports that the chip we'll actually be getting in July apparently is GP104, a smaller variant of the design Nvidia revealed at GTC. And we've actually seen a leak of the chip here. Now what's interesting is the size of the chip. GP100 may be bigger than its Maxwell counterpart, but GP104 is actually smaller, around 330 millimeters square versus 398 on the GM204. And it won't be using HBM. It'll be paired with GDDR5 or maybe GDDR5X. What we do know is that it will power at least two graphics cards known right now as GTX 1070 and GTX 1080. We expect the 1080 to at least outperform 980 Ti and by extension possibly the Titan X. We actually saw something very similar with Maxwell, the GTX 980 there. It managed to beat its previous more expensive big chip product, the GTX 780 Ti. And here's the funny thing, GTX 970 used a cut down version, but with some light overclocking, again, it could beat the 780 Ti. Now, 
If I were a betting man, I'd put money on a similar arrangement this time around, and if so, that could pave the way for some seriously exciting products, like perhaps a factory overclocked GTX 1070, potentially offering Titan X performance. Now that's something I'd really like to see. The existing GTX 970 has been a remarkable servant for Nvidia. At its peak, the Steam hardware survey had it commanding 5% of the entire Steam user base. Now bearing in mind the vast amount of GPUs on the market, both old and new, that's a remarkable result. But it was a remarkable product when it launched, redefining value in the mid-range graphics market. In fact, it was so good it probably stole a fair bit of market share from the much more expensive GTX 980. But recently, AMD's R9 390 has made a big comeback for the red team. Dark Souls 3 aside, it's run most of the big games released this year faster than the 970, with titles like Quantum Break and Far Cry Primal in particular posting some highly significant increases in overall performance. And there do remain some question marks over Nvidia's DirectX 12 performance too. We've seen big gains on AMD there, but when we benchmark Ashes of the Singularity and actually see a regression in performance on Nvidia, that's a bit of a concern. The real question is, is just how ambitious will Nvidia be with the 1070? Will we get the Nvidia that rebranded the GTX 670 Ti as the GTX 680 when they saw just how powerful it was? Or will we get the Nvidia that redefined the marketplace with the brilliant GTX 970? Of course, here at Digital Foundry we'll be testing the new cards as soon as we can and we're currently in the process of refreshing all of our benchmark tests. Now personally, I can't wait to see what NVIDIA and indeed AMD have got lined up for us. But right now, that's where we're at. Please do like and subscribe to help support our work and I'll see you soon.